You might consider that King Charles is currently enjoying his annual summer holiday at Balmoral, relaxing with his feet up. However, in reality, this week holds great significance for the future of the British monarchy. Approaching the one-year mark of his reign, Charles is resolute in securing the monarchy's future. He envisions Prince William and Kate Middleton at the center of this effort. Insiders revealed to the Daily Mirror that Charles aims to leverage the couple's growing popularity and the undeniable charisma of the Princess of Wales. The Sunday Times reports that Charles, seen as a transitional figure, may indeed be embracing a caretaker role for the monarchy. This speculation might not be unfounded, as he appears eager to share responsibilities, understanding that his reign will be notably shorter than his mother's. An exception to this, of course, is the fact that Prince William is poised to carry on the legacy for decades. This brings us to the exclusive reporting by Angela Eleven, despite the technical difficulties tonight. Angela highlights that Charles experienced profound sorrow at his mother's passing and the sudden weight of becoming king. Over time, he grew to appreciate her remarkable qualities and chose to continue her work rather than implement major changes. Angela views Charles and William's collaboration as a positive endeavor. Bonded by shared challenges and wounds, they can make significant contributions together. Their joint involvement in the coronation reinforces this partnership. William's modern perspective complements Charles' desire to enact important initiatives, particularly regarding the Commonwealth, a cause dear to him. Addressing concerns about Charles' relatively slower pace, Angela suggests it's actually a positive outcome. Having gained a sense of assurance, he no longer frets over his legitimacy as king. This self-assuredness has led to his acceptance by the people. The fact that he hasn't rushed forward with Camilla in his initial year, contrary to expectations, could be seen as a beneficial outcome. Distrust surrounded him. His approach need not be laborious, he should focus on upholding the monarchy's public image to gain affection and endorsement. The positive and inviting atmosphere he's cultivating diverges slightly from the past. Although he diligently dedicates himself daily, it's noticeable that the bond between Charles and William has grown stronger. A confidant of Prince William shared with the Daily Beast that any prospects of a royal reunion between Charles and Harry, or William and Harry this summer, are non-existent. According to this friend, neither Charles nor William will meet Harry. This stance stems from the perceived betrayal marked by the Netflix documentary and forthcoming memoir. It's intriguing because Charles, known for his compassionate nature towards Harry, seems to be heeding his elder son's counsel on how to navigate this situation. Camilla, playing a pivotal role, has been a source of solace, humor, and insight, encouraging Charles to carry on without being overly distressed about Harry's life in Montecito. The royal family is charting a course forward. Charles appears content to engage in the extensive work that royal responsibilities entail. He's enthusiastic about renovating palaces, including converting some into museums, and while he envisions a restructuring, he recognizes the country's financial and emotional challenges. Consequently, he's cautious about introducing high-cost and potentially unsuccessful initiatives. His focus rests on steady progress. The decision not to facilitate a reunion with Harry seems prudent. Trust in Harry's reliability is precarious, as there's uncertainty about whether he might exploit private conversations for financial gain through platforms like Netflix. The veracity of his disclosures remains uncertain. A hypothetical list of childhood grievances, unless accompanied by a sincere and individual apology from Harry himself, could further strain relations. Breaking tonight, the aspirations for a royal reunion have been dashed, as disclosed by a confidant of Prince William to the U.S. publication, The Daily Beast. The anticipated reconnection between Prince Charles and Prince Harry, and any possibility of reconciliation between William and Harry, have been thwarted. Prince William reportedly feels deeply betrayed by the content of Harry's book and his remarks on Netflix regarding their relationship. Their once close sibling bond has been strained, causing significant anguish for William. The situation is undeniably sorrowful, and it's quite understandable that William is still grappling with feelings of repulsion toward his brother's actions. An individual well-versed in the family's history, Princess Diana's former butler, Paul Burrell, is a trusted confidant and has provided strong insight on the matter. Regarding the perspective presented by the friend of Prince William, I find it somewhat agreeable. The complexities of royal protocols are known to me, and it's clear that both Prince Charles and William hold affection for both Harry and Meghan. However, time constraints, particularly with Charles' imminent trip to France, make it challenging to accommodate Harry's concerns into the schedule. Regrettably, it appears that a reconciliation path for Harry is closing. 
His actions, along with Meghan, have not only strained relations within the royal family, but also with the nation itself. The revelations and disclosures made by Harry have deeply affected both William and the King. The hurt caused by Harry's revelations and public disclosures is a sentiment shared by them. The airing of private matters in public is viewed as distressing by the royals, who find it appalling. The derogatory comments about Camilla, Kate, and other members of the family have inflicted genuine pain. Consequently, the royals have chosen to demonstrate solidarity by maintaining a considerable distance from Harry. This decision aims to prevent Harry from obtaining further sensitive information that he could later use against the family. In this situation, the royals are adopting a policy of rising above the controversy, choosing silence as the best course of action. Despite the strong language used, their focus is on allowing Harry and Meghan to pursue their own endeavors without intervention. Notably, Prince William seems to be taking a leadership role in these decisions, with Prince Charles receptive to his perspective. William's stance appears to be firm, a clear acknowledgement of the irreparable damage caused by Harry's actions and words in recent months. The wounds are still fresh, considering the disparaging comments about Camilla and the criticisms directed at Kate by both Harry and Meghan. I believe your assessment is accurate. It seems that the situation is unfolding in the manner you've described. The king's inclination is to maintain a harmonious environment, much like his mother, who preferred happiness over conflict. It appears that the king is emulating this approach. However, William's perspective is more assertive, as he realizes that he is next in line for the throne. With the impending responsibilities of kingship, he aims to address and rectify this predicament, urging the king to heed his counsel. William recognizes that he will bear the consequences of this issue for a longer duration than the king. Given Harry's disposition as a troublesome brother and son, finding a resolution for the Harry predicament is an intricate endeavor. The king seems to be attempting to navigate this complex situation, while William's feelings are intensified, further fueled by Kate's own strong sentiments. Regrettably, I foresee a swift resolution to be unlikely. The fracture between Harry and the royal family, along with their perceived abandonment of their country and public responsibilities, has left a substantial chasm. Turning to a different matter, Prince of Wales has faced criticism over the weekend, including allegations of apathy and sexism for not attending the Women's World Cup final in Sydney. These accusations have even implicated King Charles, suggesting that Prince of Wales has evaded official obligations and left the monarchy open to criticism. Despite my usual support for William, I believe he erred in this instance. While it's acceptable for him to make mistakes, I firmly believe he should have demonstrated solidarity by being present in Australia to support the lionesses, given his role as their patron. The images of him and Charlotte seated on a bench were likely an attempt to mitigate the backlash. Nevertheless, it's crucial for William to remember that he represents the king on official duties as Prince of Wales. While he undoubtedly has familial responsibilities, he must find a balance between his duties as a patron of the FA and his personal life.